Hi everybody and welcome back. Um, it's been a couple weeks since I've done a video. I had wanted to do a video last week but I was kind of consumed with life stuff. Fun fact, during this pandemic one can have a divorce court hearing over Zoom. Who knew? That is a fact. I'm not sure if it's fun though. But anyway, so last week was kind of life stuff consumed and then recovery from life stuff. And now I'm ready to make another video and come back and, and see you guys and everything. I've got a lot to show and I think this is going to be like a little bit disorganized because I just didn't have like time and space to kind of sit down and make notes and organize myself and everything unfortunately but um that's okay oh I've loved all the mania videos um and seeing what everyone has been working on not even like just mania videos but like floss tube in general so if you make videos I think that's awesome if you don't maybe you should because I watch a lot of them and I think they're pretty cool so first I'm going to actually do a tiny little bit of haul because it's influenced one of my starts and finishes. Um, I got my color and cotton floss. Um, I get five hand dyed flosses a month and sorry that they're not like looking super pretty but um, they were all of these like really summery colors and with like poppy and tangerine and key lime and pink lemonade and I just they inspired me a lot so I pulled out something that I knew I was going to do and it's my Lizzie Kate housework never killed anyone but why take a chance um, and I ended up instead of using a um, what I had dyed for it. I just picked this is like a just a white opalescent I think it's actually a 28 count not a 32, but um, I started and finished it And so I just used the poppy for housework and the key lime for the second line and then the third line in the Tangerine and then I changed it I decided not to do the flowers on the side mostly because I didn't feel I had enough room and so I just took that little uh, border that was supposed to be just on the bottom side and corner and just took it all the way around the piece. So I do have a May finish and this brings me five for five. So five months, five finishes, even though this is small, I'm still counting it as a, as a victory. And I really like this font, actually. I think this is pretty. And I have no idea how I'm going to finish this. I'm not having it professionally framed, of course. And you know what? I stink at finishing. <laughs> like, I have so much respect for people who can do the flat folds and make little pillows and everything. I did manage to, to turn, up, turn out an okay Biscor new um, back at Christmas time, but uh, my attempt at like a flat fold was pathetic beyond all belief and I'm so embarrassed I won't even show you <laughs> I won't even show you <laughs> so I don't know what I'm going to do with this I'd like to do something with it I don't want it to sit in the bag but anyway so there you go there's my May finish small but that's okay um so my big um whips that I worked on um I did get a little bit done on my Chatelaine, so let me show you that. And here is my Chatelaine. So this is stitched on 28 count linen in Mesa by Picture This Plus. And I just did a little tiny bit of dark in here, but that was the last step I needed to do before starting each of the palm trees that go in the corner. So hopefully by the next time I film, my goal is to have probably not completed, but at least started a palm tree to show you guys something more on this. So this is my shadowing. 
and I also worked on Princess Eliana by Mirabilia. So this is what Princess Eliana looks like um, finished, in case you haven't seen it, and this is what it looks like now. So I am stitching this on a 32 count linen in the colorway Serene by Picture This Plus, and as always, this looks gray, but it is really like a periwinkle sort of bluish purplish but with some gray undertones so there is gray in the fabric it just comes out way grayer in the video and I've just done a little bit uh, finished some of the orange off and this brown border I'm really loving working on it the colors are super interesting and I'm hoping to finish up more of the pink um, that's in here and then I don't know where I'm going after that we'll have to see so here's Princess Eliana. And I did spend some time on my meeting on the turret stairs. Um, not a lot of stitches. So let me show you what that should look like when it's done. And here's what she looks like now. So I did some little fill-in stitching and then I did finished her belt, which was confetti heavy, and then any colors that were in the belt that carried over here that I just finished my length of thread. I didn't want to stop there. And I mean, this, this stitching took me like hours. Like I, by the time I was done with that, I was like, I'm done. And I really wanted to do more on it. I really wanted it to be a day where I got like 1700 stitches done, but no, it was like less than 300 because I was changing colors so frequently, but that's okay. It's part and parcel of being a stitcher, so I'm okay with that. Um, I did put some stitches in my Tree of Hope by Mirabilia. Here we go. So I was able to just, um, I filled in the light green colored leaves and I started in on the center mostly because I was curious about how this shade of Karen Water Lily would look. And um, again, I only put about a day or so's worth of stitching into this, but um, it's coming along nicely. And here's hoping more progress. I put stitches in my Christmas garden by Blackbird Designs, which is gorgeous. Um, this is stitched on a 40 count linen in Earthen by Picture This Plus with four shades of Gloriana. And I worked on, I forget if I, uh, if I had done this last time, but I did extend the borders. Um, and then I had wanted to do the whole center motif, this big one, but it's pretty big and I don't think that was a realistic goal. However, I did, I did get some, some stitching done on it. So there's that. And I can't remember, I think I may have showed this to you last time, but I'll show it again. that I, I think I did show this to you, that I finished the cat on my Halloween cat. So hopefully done by Halloween this coming year, but that was finished. As far as, um, I put a few more stitches in my uh, Lord of the Rings fan piece. Um, and let me show you what that looks like now. And the text says, one ring to rule them all, one ring to find them, one ring to bring them all, and in the darkness, bind them. Um, I just did a little bit over here, and I am stitching this on a 
probably 28 count linen that I dyed dove gray myself. It's opalescent, of course, and I'm using this sulky to look like fire on ash. So I'm liking it. I have a couple of new starts that I did. I started Cat Lovers by Jardin Privé because I've been loving all of the Quakers that I've been seeing and so of course had to do one of my own. Um, so I've got a 40 count uh, linen from Zweigart in the color Alabaster and this is my start. And with this, I decided to choose my own colors, and so I am using Fiberlicious mostly. Um, so I haven't, I need to get these into floss away bags, but I have some different colors. Sorry, this is really messy. Um, different colors of blues and purples. Um, I do, I did get out a Gloriana blue. To add to it and I think this is a dinky dye green but I lost the label for it so um, basically I'm just instead of using two shades of pink and two shades of blue I'm using three shades of purple and three shades of blue and probably only one shade of green and I don't know what I'm doing about the brown in the pattern yet I may um, I don't think I have a silk brown that's available, but that's something that I may order. So I'm excited about that. And I'm excited to finally start stitching with the Fiberlicious hand dyed silk. I get five a month um, in their thread of the month club and I'm really liking them so far. I, I highly recommend um, if you are looking for some interesting, um, silks to stitch with. They hold up pretty well. They feel very nice. Some of them are lightly variegated, very lightly variegated, and some of them are really highly variegated with contrasting colors. And um, the ones I'm stitching with are very light variegation. But um, I highly recommend um, you check out Fiberlicious because I'm enjoying their silks. I also started um, Night Walk Down by the Blue Flower. And this is a 40 count linen in, I forget what color it is. It's a very lightly mottled gray, like dove gray. And I decided to make her a redhead. And I'm not sure if this is going to work out or not. Maybe not, but I have this like deep red and a deep gold that I'm sort of alternating. Um, and up close, it looks terrible. It looks like Gryffindor stripes, like she striped her hair Gryffindor colors. But I think from a distance, maybe it will read like copper red. Here's hoping. Um, and I've got a lot of a lot of different colors to choose from with this. I tried to sit down and kind of plan it out, but it does take a lot of colors and I fly by the seat of my pants when I color convert for the most part. Um, I change things and so we'll see. But I do have some really pretty um, like purple night sky. I think you're getting a pretty clear color. And I do have a peacock, peacock blue. So if that gives you an idea of where I'm heading for kind of jewel tones, because like surprise, I like purple and teal, cool colors, jewel tones, that sort of thing. So, um, you know, when I sit down to look at that, I hopefully will get some more done with that. I also worked quite a bit and this project, like held my interest, um, captured my interest and held my interest on this is Sakura from um, Autumn Lane Stitchery. This is their geisha pattern. And let me show you where I am now. I 
I had really wanted to get the face finished for you, but I just, I just couldn't. And I need to film, you know, now is my filming time. If I don't film now, I won't really have a chance for a while. So, um, anyway, I love the, how different the face is on this and how dramatic it is. I am using the called for, all the called for colors. Um, this is 32 count memory from Picture This Plus linen and I'm not doing anything to convert the colors, but I really, 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 really like it. I really do. It's gorgeous. Um, and I highly recommend. So I can see myself putting in a lot of stitches on that. Um, let's see. I've shown you this before, I think. Dragonfly Quaker because you can just start with one Quaker. That's boring. Um, and I got some 40 count. This is just the white linen. Yeah, it's a Zweiger base. It's white. Um, and I'm not sure what I'm doing for colors on this. Um, I, a few weeks ago, I won a giveaway from Autumn Lane Stitchery, their floss tube channel. And these um, cotton flosses hand dyed by Rolanda and they came and so I had potentially some thoughts about using some of these on this it's not enough to do this whole pattern I'm sure so if I could find some other either hand dyed cottons in my stash or DMC's that I have to go with it I could potentially use these here but um, that is something to do as well and I ended up this pattern has caught my eye for a little while and I just decided it you know I actually ordered this a while ago but it, it came in the past couple of weeks um, this is the September Sapphire Fairy and for some reason and this is a good thing I've I've been drawn to of course stitching colors that I love but also now kind of stitching colors that are different for me so like stitching the red geisha and stitching like lime green and navy or um, the little piece that I finished for today which with the kind of summery colors with the red orange and green like all of those are not my colors but I like the look of them and I've liked getting out of my comfort zone and stitching new things so I don't know when I would start this but um, I did get some of the some of these and because of some of the Cranix I couldn't find I ended up getting some petite treasure braid in those funky colors that are called for instead of I think they had the red they had the red but they didn't have the orange or the purple so I just got a few of the specialty materials to do to do this one um, so as far as I know, that's pretty much it. My stitching plans are to stitch as much of everything as I possibly can. No. I'm not sure. As I said, I would love to put some work into my Chatelaine. I would love to put some work into my Mirabilia, uh, Princess Eliana, and Tree of Hope. Um, and I think Sakura is probably going to get a lot of love this week because I just seem to be on a roll with it. Um, I don't know if I'll do any more new starts um, by the next video. I had wanted to start Templar Prophecy in May, so we'll see if I can do that, and also Unicorn Tapestry in May. So for those two things, I may get those out and try to start them. But, um, you know, for me... It often is how tired I feel and if I feel like, um, do I feel like sitting up at a floor stand or sitting and working at a lap stand or do I want to work on something that's in a cue snap or something that's in hand and also do I want my pattern to be on a tablet or um, paper and sometimes when I'm stitching certain things I'll either have a block of color or like on my Chatelaine it'll just be like a row of stitches all the way around where 
I don't need to look at a pattern. And so it kind of goes faster and I can concentrate on other things. So it's really, you know, and who knows, like, did I get six hours of sleep last night, which is fabulous, or did I get like two hours of sleep, which sucks. Um, because I've had like, not last week, but the week before I had several days where like I did no stitches, nothing because I was too tired and I really just couldn't concentrate and didn't have the energy. Um, and hopefully not too much of that longer. Although my battles with insomnia are lifelong and not likely to be over anytime soon. So anyway, I am hoping to either next week, but maybe the week after come in with another video, kind of do a mania wrap up and show you some progress on a lot of things. And speaking of which in sort of my kind of like e life is happening and it's stressful. I have taken up with a little bit of a new hobby. And so if you'd like to stick around and watch, um, a little bit of, of that, I'll show you a little bit of that. So my new hobby is what I'm thinking of as quilting for cross stitchers is English paper piecing. <laughs> and I've seen a couple of uh, floss tubers start working on projects like this. And I know that um, we had some of the materials here. So I watched videos and ended up, this is some random Harry Potter fabric that I have in my stash and just sort of did some cutting and did, you know, I'm using the gluing method. I'm not basting and, um, stitch them together and it's really pretty and I like it. And some of the, our, our fabric store has opened up, um, with of course all the restrictions about distance and masks and number of people in the store and everything. But I went in and found gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous fabric and two things. One, I decided that my bed needed a new quilt because why not? And knowing me, I love peacocks. I love, um, jewel tones and I found fabric at Joann's that was gorgeous. Um, so let me show you what the center no, this is upside down. I'm doing this around kind of a center panel and then adding oh, please. Okay, so I'm building this around a center panel and then doing panels of other uh, matching prints around it. And I'm going to let the the pattern of the fabric do the talking as opposed to piecing little, you know, pieces and designs um, together. Like I don't want to cut out like 3000 triangles as intricate and wonderful as that is. And I would love to do it. I'm just, I'm kind of letting the blocks be a little bit bigger. So this is the center and this is unironed. So sorry. Um, I like the kind of Tiffany-esque peacock print. So this will be the center and I have some other prints to go around it. And I folded them inside out. Why I did that, I don't know. There's another, there's another fabric. And here's another fabric. And here's another fabric. I'm doing thin strips of black in between them. And this has a little bit of a textured pattern to it. Um, and so that will be a queen size quilt for my bed. And I'm doing some other, um, I don't know if I'm making pillows or what I'm doing, but I'm also doing some English paper piecing, uh, projects. And I bought this fabric where I can cut out around the medallions and piece them together. 
and some more fabrics. That. And I think, oh, these are so pretty. That. That. And this is actually the binding of the quilt. And that. And these are all, you know, similar, same lines and everything, but I just adore, 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 adore. So we'll see. Oh, and I also found this, which more peacock, more peacock fabric, patterns, fabric, sorry, not patterns. So don't worry, this is not becoming a quilting channel because I am not, I don't really consider myself like a quilter. I don't do a lot of quilting. The um, quilts I have on my bed I made, but in college, so a long time ago, and I'm sort of gearing up, you know, to put another uh, quilt on the bed, but I can definitely see myself doing some English paper piecing because I like it. And like I said, I think it's like quilting for cross stitchers because it's so, you know, it's kind of like stitching, you know, 40 count um, using the sewing method, but smaller. Um, so I've really liked it. Anyway, the next time you see me, hopefully, um, I will have a lot to show you. I'll have a lot of stitching to show you, maybe some quilting to show you as well. And until then, I hope everybody is enjoying as much crafting as they're able to do, you know, wherever they are, wherever you are. And I love hearing from you and I love comments and hopefully I'll see you later. Okay, thanks. Bye.